this is a cheap little non-running model from eBay. It was originally decorated for Chesapeake and Ohio. You can see some of the stripes beneath the black spray paint. It was molded in yellow plastic and at some point in its life somebody tried to customize it with some silver and black and they didn't do a very good job. It's missing the motor and that's okay with me because I'm going to just turn this into a display piece. And in two parts, this is the first part, I'm going to add some details and the custom paint and decals to this. In the second part, I'm going to be adding some lighting details. My first step with most of these models is to clean them and give them a little bit of a wet sanding. This one needs it more than most because underneath that silver and black spray paint there are some uh, diagonal lines that were part of Lionel's original decoration. Those need to be smoothed out because I'm going to repaint this, the entire engine, I'm going to repaint it red. And if you've watched some of my other videos you know that I like Silver Streak. So I'm going to turn this Lionel switcher into an AMROAD switcher. AMROAD was the fictional rail line portrayed in the 1976 movie Silver Streak. One of the details that I'm going to add are going to be separate handrails. To have the separate handrails, I have to get rid of these molded in handrails. The sides of the cab are pretty smooth now, and I can begin thinking about where I want the new handrails to be. I have this masking tape placed, so you're going to see a total of seven handrails added, and it kind of makes sense where they're going to be. I'm going to put two on each side of the cab, uh, one towards the back where the door of the cab is, and then two towards the nose of the switcher. This little piece of scrap plastic gives me some consistency of where the holes will be drilled, and I'm just going to mark the center of where the holes will be by just cutting basically the masking tape's distance in half. So, like they say, X marks the spot, and now you can see where I'm about to drill my holes. Once they're drilled, there's no turning back. And it actually goes pretty well. No suspense here. Um, measuring ahead of time makes a big difference, and just goes a long way to ensuring that your end product turns out as nicely as it can. These are going to be some good handrails, I think. The holes turned out well, and I like their placement. pretty happy to see the black and silver disappear and I'm not a fan of yellow molded plastic either. All of that is covered up in this shiny, glossy, beautiful coat of bright red paint. Bright red is probably one of my favorite colors for trains, for cars, for a lot of things. And this will be another AMROAD model. Maybe I'm stuck in a bit of a rut, but I do like Silver Streak, 
and I have not made a switcher yet for AMROAD. So you're going to see this switcher. Down the road you're going to see a Williams EP5, an electric powered uh, train decorated for AMROAD, and then I also have a Lionel Alco that I want to decorate for AMROAD as well, and then I think I might be done. These decals are not made for an O scale model. Uh, Circus City, where I buy these decals from, they made a set of AMRO decals for F7s and HO scale. And those smaller decals work very well for this little switcher. And it fits perfectly just between the base and the lower window, the lower part of the window for this diesel switcher. The Silver Streak Arrow here is meant to be on one of the passenger cars, but there was this nice flat horizontal area on the front of the switcher and, and it fits perfectly. So now it's time to make those handrails that we've been talking about. And to do that, I'm going to use this plastic rod from Evergreen Scale Models. It's 1 16th of an inch diameter and it just so happens to fit very nicely in the pre-drilled holes on the cab of my switcher. To make the bend in the plastic, I'm going to hold it against this flat piece of wood and slightly and gently and slowly heat it. Well, that didn't go too slowly, but I can still fix it. I just bend it to a 90 degree angle, give it a gentle tap here or there until it's pretty close to 90 degrees, and I let that cool and then I will make a measurement for the second angle. So with the one end in place, I mark where the next curve should be. I take it over to the piece of wood again, and I try to more carefully this time melt the plastic so that it gets the same sort of 90 degree curve as the upper angle. It cools a little bit, and with a little adjustment, it's pretty close. And believe me, I made quite a few of these that didn't fit before I found seven that did. But this one turned out pretty good. I left each railing a little bit longer than necessary so that I could hold them from a piece of wood with this tape and make sure that I was able to paint all the surfaces an even coat of white. Even though these are white to begin with, I still want to paint them a glossy white that would match the glossy color of the red paint. Each side is marked because these actually are for the right side and the ones on the other block of the wood are guaranteed, or at least they did earlier, they fit on the left side. And because of that, uh, what do you call that, foresight, I guess, it goes together pretty easily afterwards. And now the workers who are manning this switcher in the yards taking care of the passenger cars of the Silver Streak will have something to hold on to as they climb in and out of this little Lionel diesel switcher. OSHA I think would approve and now there's no excuse for somebody to fall off of this bad boy. Not with seven handrails. When you were searching through YouTube and you saw this video, you may have noticed that it was part one. Uh, part one includes the painting, the graphics, the handrails for this little switcher. And part two is going to be when I stick some LEDs in those empty holes that you see on both the front and the back of this switcher. Because this switcher will never be motorized. I'm going to power those LEDs with a little 9 volt battery pack. So come back in a couple weeks and you'll see what this looks like in the dark. Until then please like and subscribe and thank you for watching Bob's Workshop. Take care.